Amen. Amen. Well, please take your Bibles, and if you'll turn with me to Psalm 19. Psalm 19, we're going to be looking at verse 8 this morning. Our series is called The Magnificent Word of God. And uh, we're looking at various aspects of God's Word as, as found right here in this psalm, in Psalm 19. And, uh, you know, there are six things Psalm 19 tells us about God's Word. And those, those are forming the uh, six messages in our series. Uh, psalm 19 teaches us that God's Word is inspired, infallible, authoritative, everlasting, priceless, and sanctifying. So far in our series, we've looked at the first two of those, right? The, we've looked at the inspiration of Scripture. That means that all Scripture comes from God, that, uh, that what Scripture says, God says. This is His Word. And then we looked at infallibility, the infallibility of Scripture, which simply means that Scripture is true in all that it affirms, that there are no errors in the Word of God, that you can trust everything God's Word says. So today we come to the uh, third description of God's Word, which is the authority of God's Word. The Bible is the authoritative Word of God. So we're in Psalm 19, verse 8. Would you please stand with me for the reading of God's Word? The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are are radiant, giving light to the eyes. This is the Word of God. Join me in prayer. Dear Lord, as we look into your Word now and, uh, and we look at the authority of your Word, I pray, God, that you would encourage us and challenge us uh, to put our lives under your authority and to find all of the good things that you have for us in your Son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. There's a lot of confusion in the world today about what is right and what is wrong. Uh, some people uh, even maintain that there's no such thing as right or wrong, right? That everything is cultural, everything's just relative, and really each person gets to decide for themselves. So when we begin to talk about the authority of God's Word, this can be a challenging subject for many of us. The truth of the matter is that without God's word, we are all lost in the dark and morally confused. Without an absolute standard of right and wrong, each person must make up their own moral code. The problem with that is that when each person just does what's right in their own eyes, right? That's rarely what's right in their neighbor's eyes, right? That, that create, creates trouble. Everybody's doing what they think is right, but not, not everybody agrees. And so what do we need? We need a standard. We need a guide. And we have that in the Scriptures. Why? Because the Bible is the inspired, infallible, authoritative Word of God. It's all in the verse we just read. The precepts of the Lord are right giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. And I want us to look at three things in particular this morning that all relate to the authority of God's Word. There's an outline in your worship guide. You'll find all three points there if you want to take that out. There's space to take notes there as well. Three things. God's Word is not only true, but right. We'll talk about that. Number two, God's Word has authority because God has authority. And then number three, God's way is not only right, but best. So that's where we're heading this morning. Let's get started. First of all, God's word is not only true, but right. Let's go back to our, our verse, Psalm 19, 8. Just look at the very first phrase there. The precepts of the Lord are right. And the precepts, remember we said there are different uh, terms for God's word throughout the psalm. Each one has different shades of meaning. The precepts of the Lord have to do with our obligations to God. That's the specific meaning of this word. The word translated precepts here means directions, orders, detailed rules for life and conduct. Did you know that life comes with directions? Praise God, because uh, if your life's anything like mine, probably came with one of those big notices saying, assembly 
required. Ever feel like your life came from Ikea, you know? Yeah, life is messy. You know, the different parts of your life, they don't come together automatically. Your life doesn't come complete out of the box. It comes together slowly, piece by piece. And so God gives you and me the directions that we need. And he does that in his word. God's word is not only true, but right. You know, there are any number of uh, textbooks out there that are full of facts about math or science or history. But you see, God's word is not only true. We learned that last week, right? Infallible, no error. It's not only true, it's right. It not only distinguishes truth from error, but right from wrong. The Bible is both factually true and morally right. I like the way Alistair Begg puts it. He says, the Bible teaches us what to believe and how to live. It involves both our belief and our behavior. And as such, God's word gives us moral absolutes. Remember, that's what our verse said. The precepts of the Lord are right. That word translated right, it's a word that means straight, upright, pleasing, Just like you need a straight edge, right? Good old-fashioned ruler. Just like you need a straight edge to draw a straight line, so you need God's precepts to know God's righteous standards for living. God's precepts provide for us a norm, an absolute, a straight edge to measure and correct our own crooked ways. Now, contrary to what so many people will tell you, there is such a thing as right and wrong. There are moral absolutes. There are things that are always right or wrong for all people, in all places, at all times. It's always wrong to dishonor your parents. It's always wrong to murder. It's always wrong to commit adultery. It's always wrong to steal. It's always wrong to lie. You know, when David in the Bible committed adultery with Bathsheba, God sent his prophet, the prophet Nathan, to tell him and to ask him, why did you despise the word of the Lord? God's precepts, his commands. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You see, the precepts of the Lord are right. And that means when you go against what God says in his word, yes, you may be doing what is right in your eyes, but you're doing evil in God's eyes. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. See, God calls them as he sees them. And unlike a lot of umpires in baseball, God always sees them right. When God calls something evil, it's evil. When God calls something good, it's good. And yet people are constantly rejecting God's word, making up their own moral codes. Instead, people are constantly trying to rewrite God's laws for life and society. What does Psalm 19.8 say? The precepts of the Lord are right. God's word gives us moral absolutes. Now, God's word not only gives us moral absolutes, but God's word also shows you. It shows you the right way to live. Look at the second half of verse 8 now. The commands of the Lord are radiant, That word radiant uh, is a word that means clean, pure, or bright. Uh, It's translated in the Song of Solomon as uh, as bright as the sun. That's what that word radiant means. God's commands are radiant. What are we saying? There's a right path, there's a wrong path, and God's word shows you. It shows you the right way to live. Have you ever been lost in the woods? If you ever have, you know what it's like. You get a little nervous at first, like, okay, I'm not sure where I'm at. Then you begin to worry. Then you begin to panic. And you're looking around for familiar signs or landmarks. And then when you finally find the trail again, clearly marked, 
You feel such a sense of joy and relief because you're back on the right path again. You see, life without God's word is like that, except worse. Because it's like being lost in the woods at night. You can't see your way to find your way. But you see, that's where God's word comes in. The commands of the Lord are what? Radiant, showing you the right path, showing you the right way to live. And this is a truth we find throughout the scripture, a very common theme in the Psalms. Let me share with you three verses from the Psalms on this theme. Psalm 43, verse 3. It says, send forth your light and your truth, the truth of God's word. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Psalm 119, verse 105. You may know this one. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Same Psalm, verse 130. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So it's God's word shows you the right way to live. Shows you the right path. I like the way William uh, Ward put, put it. He wrote this. It's not enough to own, own a Bible. We must read it. It is not enough to read it. We must let it speak to us. It is not enough to let it speak to us. We must believe it. And it is not enough to believe it. We must live it. God's word is not only true, but right. The precepts of the Lord are right. God's word gives you moral absolutes. The commands of the Lord are radiant. God's word shows you the path. It shows you the right way to live. That's our first point this morning. God's word is not only true, but right. Our second point is this. God's word has authority because God has authority. Remember where we started in our series. The Bible is God's inspired word. That means that it comes from God. And just as God's word is infallible because God is infallible, we saw that last week, so God's word has authority because God has authority. It's his word. And so it carries the exact same authority as God does. Now, in case you somehow forgot that God has authority over you this morning, uh, let me give you a quick refresher course, okay? First of all, God has authority over you. Why? Because he created you. You owe your whole life to him. You wouldn't be here without him. God created you, therefore he has authority over you. We see this throughout the scriptures. Ecclesiastes 12 is a good example. We read, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. God is both your creator and judge. In fact, the reason he's your judge is because he's your creator. And therefore, he has authority over you. Now, when we speak of God's authority, we're not only speaking of God the Father, because God is a trinity, right? So we're also speaking about Jesus, the Son of God. The Bible tells us that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three were involved in creation. All of who God is, is involved in your creation. Therefore, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all have authority in your life. And that's why Jesus could say in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 24, I tell you the truth, Jesus said, whoever hears my word, Jesus was speaking about his words, and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. Jesus is speaking with authority here. He's saying this, if you follow Jesus, you will not be condemned. If you do not follow Jesus, you will be condemned. How do you get the authority to say something like that? Jesus has authority over you because he is God and because he created you. And that leads us to the second part of our refresher course on God's authority. One day, every person will confess that Jesus is Lord. We read this in Philippians chapter 2. God exalted him, Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. I think that covers all the bases. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And you may not bow to his authority now, but you will then. Because everyone will. There will be no exceptions. One day you, along with everyone who has ever lived, will bow before Jesus, your judge and creator. God created you, so he has authority over you. One day, every person will confess that Jesus is Lord. God's word has authority because God has authority. So, God's word is not only true, but right. Number two, God's word has authority because God has authority. And now, finally, number three, God's way is not only right, but best. I love that. His way is not only right, but it's best. Let's go back to our our verse, Psalm 19.8. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Remember what we said about Psalm 19, these descriptions of God's word that we find here not only tell us what God's word is, they also tell us what God's word does, right? And here we find what God's word does. It gives joy to your heart. It brings light to your eyes. You know, there are a lot of people looking for enlightenment these days, right? Looking for enlightenment. Let me tell you, you don't have to go very far. You don't need to go to a sweat lodge. You don't need to meditate on a butterfly. Oh. You don't need to climb a mountain looking for that swami at the top of the peak in the hut. All the enlightenment you ever need is right here in God's word. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Now, we already talked about creation. We've seen that God created you, so he has authority over you. But there's another aspect to God's creation. We don't want to miss this. Because God created you, he also knows what is best for you. He knows what's best for you. Yes, he gives us his commands, but his commands are not burdensome. Why? Because he knows the right path and the best way to live. And so the psalmist says the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Proverbs 6.23 says this about God's word. For these commands are a lamp. This teaching is a light, and the corrections of discipline are the way to life. What's Proverbs saying? God's word corrects you when you're wrong and puts you back on the pathway to life. Isaiah 8.20 says, to the law. And to the testimony, speaking of God's word, if they, those out in the world, if they do not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Whole lot of people out there, they all think they know what's best for you. You just have to ask yourself one question. Are they following God's word? If not, don't listen to them. Because Isaiah says they have no light of dawn. God knows what's best for you. So don't listen to anyone who's not listening to God's word. I can't tell you how many times I've counseled with people who are ignoring God's word in their lives. And and then they come in, they wonder why their life is so off track. I do my best. I try to point them... uh, Back to God's word, I remind them that God's way is not only right, but it's best. I encourage them to recommit their life to Christ, to start reading their Bibles, to come back to church, to follow God's way instead of the world's way. But too often, they leave my office, they go right back to doing what they were doing. And then months or even years pass, And they're right back in my office for counseling again. God created you. So he knows what's best for you. 
God's way is not only right, it's best, which is why when it comes right down to it, true joy comes only from following God's word, right? That's what we see in our verse. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. You will not find lasting joy in life outside of this book. It's not going to happen. Joshua 1.8 tells us, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do, right? We have to do it. Do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Or we read in Psalm 1, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on God's law, he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Perhaps Jesus put it the simplest of all. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Do you want joy in your heart? True joy comes only from following God's word. And if we are truly going to follow God's word, if we are truly going to accept it as the authority for our lives, then here's the deal. We can't pick and choose. We must obey all of it. God says in Deuteronomy 12, says, see that you do all I command you. Do not add to it or take away from it. See, anytime you add or take away from God's commands, you know what you're doing? You're making yourself the authority now instead of God and his word. The Apostle Paul had something to say about that. He wrote in 1 Timothy 6, he said, if anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, he is conceited and understands nothing. There's a lot of people here today you may or may not agree with everything the Bible says. That's your prerogative. But just remember this. When you disagree with God's word, you are disagreeing with God, right? It's his word. And if you disagree with God about what he says in his word, then Paul says you're conceited, that you understand nothing. You know, you think about it, he's kind of right there, right? It's pretty conceited for anyone to say, you know what, I think I know more than God does. I think I know better than God does. Someone once said, the Bible is not a bag of trail mix. You can't just pick out the pieces you like and then ignore the rest. If I only obey the parts that I like, then I'm not submitting to God's authority at all. I'm really making myself the authority. Instead of letting God's book stand over me, I make myself stand over God's book. And whatever excuses I might make, if I'm not obeying God, then I am not loving God. We read those verses from 1 John 5 earlier. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And so God's way is not only right, it's best. God created you. He knows what's best for you. True joy comes from only following God's word. We cannot pick and choose. We must obey all of it.
And so three wonderful truths from one verse in, in the Bible today. God's word is not only true, but right. God's word has authority because God has authority. God's way is not only right, but best. And so you have a decision to make this morning. Will you accept the Bible as God's inspired, infallible, authoritative word in your life? Or will you go your own way, choose your own rules, and leave God's path far behind? Of course, my prayer for you is that you will accept God's word as authoritative in your life, that you will come to know God's word as the absolute standard for right and wrong, and that you will desire to follow God's word as your rule of life. Because when it comes right down to it, folks, this, this, this is what it comes. Either God is the, the authority in your life or you are the authority. Either God can do a better job directing your life or somehow you think you can do a better job directing your life. And Psalm 19.8 teaches us that God's way is right and best. All God's ways are good. All God's paths are peace. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. And the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Well, dear God, we thank you so much for your word this morning. Uh, Lord, it does give joy to our hearts. It gives light to our eyes. And Lord, we, we, we're so sorry for the times that we kind of go off on a path on our own and stumble around in the woods when we could be making good progress. We could be making such good progress if we would just follow the path that you have laid out for us in your word. Thank you, God, for making it clear. Thank you for teaching us right from wrong. Thank you for choosing that which is best for us. Help us to follow. Help us to trust. Help us to obey. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer this morning and uh, you'd like to pray uh, with someone from the church. A number of our church leaders will be up front. Uh, they would love to uh, pray with you if uh, you have any need in your life or in responding to the message today or, or if you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior. You say, I want to know more about that. Uh, come and talk to one of our leaders. They'll be up front. And, uh, or you can talk to me on the way out. I'd be glad to talk with you as well. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to introduce you to Jesus if you don't know him. Let's stand together now as we sing, uh, Jesus Messiah.
Go forth following Jesus, trusting him, and discovering all the good things God has for you in your life. Go in God's grace and be blessed. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Mm -hmm.